All right, welcome back to this second talk to the editor session. Um, now we have Martin Reifer, which also is a very long uh, mapper, long time mapper in OSM. You probably know him more from one of his development projects, which is Overpass uh, Turbo, this nice uh, web interface for Overpass, which makes it a little bit easier. And since 2000, last year, end, um, of last year. end of last year, he has taken over the maintenance of the ID editor project. So he's now paid by the OSM app to do this. And he's going to tell us a little bit about what's the road ahead there. Thank you very much. So welcome to my talk about the ID editor, which will be divided in two parts. In the first part, I will take a look back at what happened in the last 10 years or so. And in the second part, I will try to give you uh, an idea what at least my ideas are for the future of the idea editor. So to start, how did we get here? So first an overview. Um, about 10 years ago, uh, a guy named Richard wrote a blog post on the OSM blog um, explaining or showcasing a prototype he wrote and he called it ID. And it was an editor for OpenStreetMap data written in JavaScript. And it should, yeah. Uh, and this were like the first initial sparks of the ID project. Shortly after that, the, uh, thanks to, to a grant from the, the Knight Foundation, the a development team at Mapbox took over the development of the ID editor and in a very short time, in about a year, uh, completed it to a state where it was usable to be published on OpenStreetMap as the default editor. After that, the project saw continued development at some companies, but also the community. And I want to highlight the work done by Brian and also by Quincy later on in this regard. Since uh, about two years ago, the Open Citizen Foundation directly pays for this um, yeah, maintenance development work. First it was Quincy, and last year I took over. So this very first prototype looked like this. So not really very much similar to how the idea looks now, but the idea was to uh, create a simple to use friendly editor for beginner mappers. And it should also replace the previously flash based editor where the, there was a technical issue that um, it was quite well known to everyone that flash as a technology would not continue to be supported for a longer time frame and actually today it's not available anymore so the first prototype showed that it's actually possible to write such an, an open system editor in javascript that doesn't need a plugin anymore in the browser now in the last 10 years there have been quite a lot of versions of the ID editor and i want to really get quickly through them and show what i think were the biggest changes that happened over time. So version one was completed in May 2013, and it was the first version of ID that was available on OpenStreetMap to edit. The next version was then already made as uh, the default editor that people would, like new mappers would uh, get when they don't choose a specific editor. Next change was that the background images were externalized in a separate repository. Then came functionality that allowed OpenStreetMap GPX traces to be shown. Then the editor got a, um, a turn restriction editor, which is seen in this screenshot here. Next, we got localized address fields. Um, also, quite early on, um, the Street View images were um, included. Then we got the copy paste feature and version 1.8 gave users automatically the locally best under quotes uh, background layer. Version 1.9 changed the color of the save button if you don't save for a long time. Next came version 2, which was quite a big change under the hood, where the JavaScript code was modular, modularized in a bit of a more standardized way so that it can be more easily reused by other projects. Then we got uh, support for KML and GeoJSON as custom data overlays. 
um, the next version added the right click menu or changed the menu where you um, apply operations on Blizzard objects to a right click menu, which is a little bit more standard. Then we got info panels where I could show um, yeah, stuff like measurements, how big an object is, or like metadata of the underlying images. The next came support for Carter view, which was called back then OpenStreetCam. Then ID was a bit, got a little bit more strict in terms of what geometries are allowed to be drawn. Um, so basically a very first validation kind of thing. And then it got support for WMS servers for background images. After that, version 2.8 added um, yeah, um, some links to local communities when you click save. And then also Bing Street site was included as a uh, available data source. And 2.10 added support for OpenStreetMap nodes to be shown. Next one, this is the last of these slides, uh, was this added support for uh, vector tiles as custom local data over overlays. Then the name suggestion index was created, which is basically how ID um, translates brand names or, or shop chains uh, into OpenStreetMap tags. Then there was a big phase of where lots of focus was um, paid towards validation and quality assurance. And for example, tools like Keepright were included. Also improve OSM and later on Os Osmos, which allow to show in the editor where possible problems with the data are. For example, like you can see in the screenshot, a disconnected way or something like that. But ID also included in, from this time on um, some built-in validation, which um, highlights errors immediately, like just as, as you draw, uh, a new way potential errors are shown. And what also quite nice feature is that these errors can be fixed sometimes immediately just by choosing one of possible solutions. For example, when you have an overlaying roads or paths, you might want to add a bridge or a tunnel or just connect the features. Also in this time, um, support for touch inputs was improved. We got multi-selection of features where you can edit multiple objects at once. And also filtering possibilities for street level pictures. And one of the last changes was that the presets database was externalized in a separate repository so it can be managed independently a little bit more easily. And last but not least, uh, the support for Internet Explorer was dropped uh, a few months ago. And again, a new little bit uh, of an improved, more modern build system was introduced. So if you want to play around just as a gimmick with the, all these old versions of ID, I put them on my website. And you can just click on the version you want and try it out how it looked like back in the day. And um, it's, as a note, it's using the development server of OpenStreetMap, so you can even try to upload and stuff like that. So it's not going to be, it's not going to go into the live OpenStreetMap database. But also uh, in 2019, there was uh, something called the V3 prototype, which showed a largely redesigned user interface for the ID editor. And sadly, it remained a prototype because of a multitude of factors, I would say. One of them was that it might have been too large of a change and made it harder to accommodate existing workflows. Um, but there are definitely a lot of great user interface, user experience ideas in there that I will pick up again in the second part of this talk. Now, a quick uh, slide about the presets uh, that ID uses. Presets are basically how ID sees the OSM database, how it makes sense of the OSM tags. And what you can see is that over time, the amount of presets grew, which doesn't mean necessarily that back in 2014, uh, half or a third or two thirds of the 
was in fact were not known to us uh, to ID. It was just that the presets were not that fine grained. There might have been one shop preset that covered all the shops, and like maybe a handful of individual more specific shop types like supermarkets. But nowadays we have like 70 presets for all kinds of shops, uh, very detailed ones. And also, you see that the number of fields which correspond to the attributes that these presets have grew faster than the number of, uh, yeah, basically primary tags that are supported. So you can say that uh, mapping got more fine grained over time. Now, I also don't want to neglect that there have been some like difficult times, maybe, so to speak. There were especially quite uh, intricate controversies around how the ID tagging presets have been implemented, um, mostly about very specific things. And I would say the situation got better over time, but there are still some open issues. Also, one other not really optimal part is that uh, currently ID uses the editor layer index for the background imagery, and other editors like Jason use their own database, which is not optimal since the community now has to maintain two, basically twice the same same data, and might have been might be more efficient to bundle the effort, and maybe in the mid to long term, uh, we can talk about how we could improve this situation. Yeah, also maybe for forks, it could be said it was not always easy, or it's still not easy to contribute back improvements. Um, yeah. So last slide for the viewback part of the talk is some user statistics. On the left, you see absolute numbers. On the right, you see the same graph for like in terms of percentages of the overall OpenStreetMap user base. And in blue are shown the number of uh, users that are have been using open uh, like ID over uh, the respective years, and in red the total number of edits done. And what's interesting to me was to see that the uh, red bars grow faster than the blue bars. So it means that each ID editor, like each mapper in ID, is making more edits per per year. Which is cool. <laughs> and yeah, sure, note that the last years are not complete yet. So that's why the, the drop is not really, uh, it's just an artifact. And yeah. Now to the second part of this talk, the road that's still ahead, that's of course much more tricky to answer the, this question. But I, yeah, try to identify some some areas, some some large topics, which will be become more relevant in the let's say next ten years or so. But before that, I want to like stress that ID is still the first mapping experience for many many mappers. It might be not as many, or it could be the case that in ten years more mappers start out using some mobile apps or different mapping techniques. But, um, but I think still ID will be, remain an important step of a mapper when they progress uh, their experience levels uh, up, like say, let's say from some, some kind of more like assisted mapping. Next step could be ID and then maybe advanced editing using JSON. So this means that ID should remain simple and friendly to use. And it's also like important to think about what are um, what's going to change in, in the course of the next maybe ten years. Uh, so maybe the data or the topics, the, the features that people want to map shifts a little bit, could be, or maybe some different mapping patterns emerge, or yeah, maybe other topics become more important. For example, how we can keep map data up to date that's already mapped. So now to the first topic that I identified what would be important for the next future. And, or maybe before I start, it's 
like I number those, but it doesn't mean that number one is less or more important than number five. Uh, and they also overlap in parts, uh, but yeah, still. So accessibility could mean to provide uh, some support for like alternative ways to interact with ID outside of this very much uh, mouse focused, mouse and keyboard focused input, because there are surely people that are not able to use a mouse very well. And so better keyboard support or support for more efficient keyboard use while mapping could be definitely um, useful for the future and also like maybe for people who are not, uh, who can see very well high contrast mode or a screen reader and voice inputs, stuff like that. Then customizability has been like on the, the roadmap of OpenStreetMap uh, of the idea so since very first version, but it uh, can still be improved always. So for example, what I can imagine could be useful for a lot of people is to have a specific map styles for specific mapping tasks. Let's say you were more interested in mapping uh, surfaces of roads, then it might be beneficial to have maps that let highlight you that this map layer is still missing. Or let's say user supplied user defined presets or some kind of plugging system might also be fun for the future. In terms of performance, I have noticed that ID got a little bit more sluggish to use over time, especially when I compared all these old versions with the new ones. And a part of the reason is that a lot more data got, gets into ID. You saw that the, the presets database got much bigger and we even, ha even, even have this large name suggestion index now. Also the background imagery database grew very much over time. So all this make ID sometimes feel a little, little, little bit sluggish and it can be improved. Also the data loading, loading of all this data can add some time uh, and startup times uh, slower which might be relevant when you're, for example, on a train or on a slow internet connection. So there are definitely areas to improve performance in this regard, and also map rendering can be faster, especially in very densely mapped areas. And this is, for example, a point where I'm very for looking forward to talking to the rapid people, uh, which have already tackled this problem, as far as I heard. Now, the last two points are for me very much exciting because I would say the mapping experience in general should be a delightful experience. It should be like nothing that is in any way frustrating or hard or um, complex. So, yeah. But in, at, at some, for some tasks, ID is a little bit sometimes not great. Uh, some examples might be to simply draw a rectangular building or rectangular area in general. That takes a few more clicks than it's needed and also you have to press Q to make it really rectangular. So this could be improved by having a specialized building tool. Or when you want to try to make a, a, a bend in a, cur a road a bit more nice, a bit more smooth, it takes a lot of clicks and it could be, it should be easier. It should be more delightful. And for this, a refined geometry mode would be useful. Or an easier way to copy and paste tags from one object to another. Or a way to split areas, which is currently very hard, even if you know what you're doing. But like uh, maybe as a side note, not only in ID, even if you are using some other software, it's in general not an easy task. And it is an, uh, a f yeah, mapping pattern that I think will be more important in the future because you might want to refine lens cover areas uh, when something is already there. Right? And yeah, another point would be the opening hours, which yeah, is currently also not the easiest thing to edit in OpenStreetMap. Okay, then last point is uh, what is called by some people map gardening. So the phase when an area is already past the initial 
phase of drawing everything from scratch from an empty canvas, then more, other tasks can become more important uh, to keep, for example, the map data up to date. One task would be to even identify potentially outdated objects. And there are some editors, for example, Sheet Complete, that use this check date as a concept to mark um, data that is not up, like that is up to date. And something like that could be supported by ID and should be. Also, support for lifecycle prefixes to mark a feature as temporarily closed or, or under the construction or as abolished. And yeah, I think the last one we already had in the last slide. Now, I'm surely missing some points here, what will be important. And see me in the um, yeah, break of bit, birds of a feather session in room 102 right after lunch. And last but not least, I want to thank everyone who contributed to the project in, in any way, basically. Here I've listed all the people who are mentioned in the change log as uh, who actually contributed the code to it. But um, other than that, there have been also a lot of people translating ID, reporting bugs, testing out new versions, and requesting features and discussing. And thank you very much to everyone involved. Thank you, Martin. Uh, unfortunately, we're running a bit late, so I'll just take two questions from the online audience, and you can then go to the off session uh, later. So, uh, to summarize a bit, uh, lots of questions were about customizing ID for your own use, have your own presets. What do you think about uh, customizing IU elements like pre complete does? Is this something you planned? Yeah, that's definitely a thing I've been thinking about a lot. So. I think in the long term, some kind of plugin system would definitely make sense um, so that it would be would allow everyone to more easily customize ID without necessarily making a fork out of it and then having to live with keeping this fork up to date with all the changes that are like made to the main idea. Okay. Uh, another interesting question. How is the software governance uh, process organized? Who decides which functionality to add, where to prioritize it, uh, nice. and so on? Is there community feedback possible? The community feedback is always possible and uh, encouraged, I would say. Currently, it's basically me deciding on what is tackled next and what's accepted, what not. I'm open for, for better ideas. That's my comment on it. Okay, one final question. What's your relation with Rapid? Where do you see it going in the long term? Are you going to develop in parallel uh, use each other's features? What's the plan? Yes, unfortunately, I've not yet talked to many people from the Rapid team. Um, I'm sure some of you will be at the conference. Maybe raise your hand. Otherwise, meet outside. Let's talk about how we can more efficiently cooperate. Okay, thank you. And yeah, if you have questions, please come to the BOF uh, yeah. room 102, not 101 anymore. <laughs>